you very much uh, for uh, the opportunity to speak at the number of theories web seminar. Uh, I will tell you, um, just as it is my turn to speak at the seminar, uh, uh, it's just in time for uh, a new uh, for uh, some uh, progress on uh, our joint work with Ran Kalegari and Yunjing Tang. Uh, that um, the three of us have uh, have uh, spoken about uh, on uh, other occasions, uh, and I would I want to introduce uh, a method for proving irrationality of some uh, periods uh, and. Uh, uh, give you a sense of what we call arithmetic holonomy bounds, how they are useful in uh, how they can be used. This is really dressing uh, in new language, some very uh, old and uh, classical things, but um, uh, the perspective is uh, somewhat uh, unusual maybe. Uh, and uh, we are approaching irrationality proofs in uh, bounding uh, by bounding dimensions of certain spaces of G functions, ultimately trying to show that the G function uh, that would uh, be uh, uh, would be generated by uh, linear dependency uh, among periods could not ultimately exist. Uh, so uh, I want to start with just uh, somehow out of the context displaying one such function that actually is. Uh, 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 will be a uh, piece of our puzzle. Uh, I want to say that, uh, so this uh, is uh, definitely not uh, my uh, uh, contribution in this uh, story, uh, because uh, since this is some duadic uh, analytic property, which looks somewhat similar to uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, something I did with uh, the uh, Somehow the punchline with uh, two adic congruences in the in a uh, solution of the Shinzo Zassenhaus conjecture, but it's really different. Uh, and uh, so uh, I want to ask. Uh, so uh, observe that this function uh, for any integer k. Uh, is, so we, we are multiplying two um, uh, power series uh, with two adic convergence radii a quarter. And for some reason uh, uh, that uh, I don't think we understand particularly well, uh, there is. Uh, uh, Overconvergence for exactly the odd uh, integers k, odd powers of the logarithm, and there doesn't seem to be a periodic property of this kind. Uh, Frank found this uh, uh, function that we were missing, perhaps for an embarrassing, embarrassingly long uh, period of time, and it's a crucial part of our puzzle. Uh, while uh, thinking about uh, Nesterenko's paper on the Catalan constant, so we'll see how uh, uh, these sort of functions emerge. Uh, and uh, I want to ask if there is more conceptual explanation of this observation. We will only uh, use this function for k equal to one, uh, and if there is anything periodic uh, uh, similar to that. So what is this kind of function? I've written down, so basically it's a holonomic function. It satisfies a linear differential equation uh, with coefficients polynomials in X, uh, and uh, it, uh, we can tell where the singularities are. The, so there is obviously a branch, uh, so here at x equals one, uh, so uh, infinity is a branch point and also zero because we integrated basically by this t uh, here. Uh, and for k equals one, we uh, miraculously somehow the two adic denominators work out. Uh, and so this is, uh, 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 turns out to, ha this has a periodic convergence radii one for all primes. And there is a structure of denominator, so the notation in the following will be the lowest common multiple of the first integers n squared. So holonomic functions, with uh, so it means that the singularities are only at 0, 1, and infinity. That means uh, we can analytically continue on all paths in this Riemann surface, uh, uh, and we get monodromies uh, if we, well, around the singularities. Uh, so we're just looking at a branch at, at, uh, at the origin and it has arithmetic properties. Uh, so in some sense, the progress that we uh, are reporting on is that we get uh, enough, uh, well, we are not able to precisely des describe, determine the, the space of all the G functions. Uh, we'll recall a bit of history uh, uh, for, okay, holonomic functions with these singularities and these particular denominator types, but we come close enough and uh, I want to to to, sh uh, to show why this is relevant to some uh, irrationality proofs. Uh, with uh, so the title, uh, it's also about uh, 
uh, so uh, speculating what what is the next simplest, meaning interesting enough, it should be some pure, maybe a Dirichlet of function value, uh, and uh, simplest in the sense of more uh, uh, what we could hope for. So uh, after upper is irrationality proof of zeta of, of three. So I've uh, this formula, of course, not very uh, detailed, but it, it encapsulates uh, uh, all we know besides Aperi about uh, transcendent, about about uh, uh, basically, yeah, these are the transcendental special values of L functions that are proved and all of them reduce to the classical, just basically to the theory of the exponential function, whether it's the uh, Hermit Lindemann Weierstrass theorem or the Gelfond Baker theorem in the second case. And they also include uh, uh, all the linear dependencies, basically, we can say, of course, the second rows. Or k equals one and uh, uh, and the second row, so uh, are linearly independent over q bar. Uh, and then there was Aperi's story in Lumini 1978, proving the irrationality of zeta of three. Uh, apart from these cases, there's not a single special value of an L function where we can uh, even for any uh, special values at integer points of uh, classical modular forms. Uh, which are classical in the sense of congruence for some gamma zero of n, because I'll show an example in a moment due to Boykers. Uh, so yes, the, uh, apart from this, there were no uh, no further irrationalities proved. Uh, and uh, so uh, we owe a lot uh, in this method, the, this point of view to this uh, classical paper of Boykers, irrationality, interpreting Aperi's proof and trying to look for for uh, some similar, uh, some different examples using uh, modular forms. So the Aperi sequences are interpreted as coefficients of G functions uh, in a that I will summarize. Uh, and so this is the non congruence modular forms I alluded to. Uh, so this is some, uh, uh, just like uh, one example from Boyker's paper. Apologies, I'll just scroll uh, back to just show. Uh, this is not the kind of thing that uh, we want. So there are a bunch of candidates which involve mixed uh, L values. So this is, for example, what Boyker's proved in, in this paper. Irrational, uh, this combination of Z3 and uh, certain Dirichlet L function at three, even over this field Q root five. But surprisingly, after uh, all this time, after Aperi's proof, uh, which depend on uh, uh, some miraculous numerical uh, fortitude, there were no further uh, uh, cases of uh, actual L values. Uh, other than this one, well, you see, if you expand this Q series, you get certain denominators at two. So this is a non congruence modular form and the special value at two of this L function is irrational. This is an example in Poitras paper. So what could be, what do you think is the next simplest case? I would say after the zeta three is irrational, one could ask, uh, can you prove it's quadratic irrational? Uh, one could ask, can we prove zeta five is not rational? Uh, or maybe this one is more basic. Uh, the one zeta two and zeta three are linearly independent. Uh, and th uh, these are not unrelated, so I'll, uh, but uh, it's not what we do. Uh, so irrationality of the Catalan constant, uh, so this is basically the value of uh, an uh, L function at an odd character at S equal to two. So this is not one of these critical values uh, in, the, in the general ex example, and all of them are uh, uh, open. So the Catalan constant is this example. So basically we argue that uh, the uh, uh, Catalan constant is maybe the second simplest, but there is one candidate which perhaps uh, didn't look very, okay, which is arguably simpler. And it is this Dirichlet L value to the uh, least uh, negative discriminant L2 chi minus three. So this is uh, uh, what we hope to, what we'll be concerned for uh, in, uh, uh, in the story. Uh, and so when one speaks of such a period, uh, okay, so these are periods uh, of, uh, uh, I guess uh, we, we should say uh, mixed state motives ramify that this the three. So we allow, so basically we can say that zeta two is arguably the simplest value and then we go in the conductor aspect. Uh, and so then, uh, so this is the next one. 
Uh, and I'm showing you a Mahler measure formula due to Smythe. Uh, this is also one inevitably uh, speaks of this Gieskin manifold, when we, uh, which uh, basically the volume of a hyperbolic manifold this pi, uh, uh, is pi, uh, is pi times this constant. And we have, uh, uh, so uh, we only uh, treat the actual L value, not any of these related uh, Mahler measure or uh, or hyperbolic volumes. Somehow it seems more basic. So this is uh, the canonical height, if you think of the simplest uh, uh, variety uh, of positive, so uh, uh, of genuinely uh, uh, high uh, dim uh, dimension greater than one, the line one plus x plus y equals zero uh, in uh, GM2. Uh, and it's uh, this is the analogous formula for the Catalan constant, slightly more complex, zeta of three goes one dimension up and, and so forth. So uh, we will uh, announce that this is not properly. Uh, so uh, I will introduce the ideas and, and show you the method, especially on simple examples. And also I would like to give a sense of how the technical statement of the what we call the holonomic bound looks like uh, and ask if maybe if you think that uh, that can be used for other things. But uh, so uh, the paper is uh, in writing and uh, we hope to uh, to, to uh, circulate it soon. Uh, so this is the L value and we uh, uh, we have the irrationality of one this conductor aspect zeta two, which is the simplest one and this next one. So uh, this is the goal. And I would, uh, uh, it's somehow uh, not the usual uh, maybe uh, approach of constructing. There are not really new uh, miraculous constructions a la Aperi in this uh, work. Uh, we rather use constructions that were uh, 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 done by Aperi and others, uh, particularly Zagier in this case, uh, but in, in new ways, which, uh, so uh, we are, uh, uh, we do not show irrationality by constructing uh, particularly good rational approximations. Uh, and uh, it belongs to the subject of effective Dalfantin approximation. So I would like to begin with recounting a bit of history and a bit of uh, uh, some examples. Uh, okay, so uh, Zico's 1929 paper uh, was the starting point of uh, many developments, in particular, uh, the theory of E functions and a sketch of the theory of G functions. An E function uh, is a, a holonomic power series. There's always in, in our uh, uh, discussion, there's a differential linear differential equation. So L of F equals zero. There was some differential ODE with polynomial coefficients. And we, sub we look at a power series solution at the origin with rational coefficients with the with these arithmetic properties, the ANs are integers, and we have uh, basically it's supposed to, to look like, like the exponential function, hence the E function. Uh, and uh, maybe, uh, so there, there, there are geometrically growing denominators uh, or nested by division like that. So we, we look at the LC, uh, least common denominator of the first N coefficients, that's supposed to grow at most geometrically. A G function is the same, uh, just without the factorials, uh, but the arithmetic theory of uh, these subjects are uh, very difficult. I mean, the, the, the G functions case is much uh, uh, less understood. Uh, and there is essentially by Siegel and Shilovsky a complete answer in the E functions case about algebraic relations about special values. So I want to start a bit with that history. Uh, so G coming from perhaps geometric series. Uh, and uh, let me give an example, which is, well, basically algebraic functions. And basically we saw an example on the on the very opening slide that was a G function. Uh, here's another one that comes from, uh, okay, that's maybe not the first example you expected to see, but uh, uh, it's a pretty uh, classical result of Baker that I just dress into, uh, into this uh, uh, not, kind of uh, uh, Pade approximation uh, notation involving hypergeometric polynomials. So what I did, um, I took a G function, took a special value at a suitable, very carefully crafted uh, rational argument three over 128, 
And uh, so Baker was able to derive this uh, very nice explicit Daphantin inequality of subliovial quality uh, by uh, uh, so uh, effective Daphantin approximation uh, by some uh, quite quite a few of uh, numerical fortitudes. So there's this 128 uh, minus three is a perfect cube, and then the triadic argument uh, coming from canceling the extra denominators from the one third exponent in these hypergeometric functions. But basically, uh, so this is a G function. Uh, if you take the generating series of some Pade approximation evaluated at some fixed uh, suitable special point, and I'm saying holonomic uh, on, uh, uh, so uh, that means it satisfies a linear ODE with singularities the following points and infinity. Uh, and uh, so this really started with uh, uh, fact that uh, binomial functions have Pade approximations classically and explicitly given by hypergeometric polynomials, uh, and uh, uh, just uh, evaluating at the uh, argument. So, uh, so we we took uh, the general scheme of uh, diagonal and and Hermit Pade approximations to a binomial function. So now I am summarizing. Uh, which is also a way of introducing one key point uh, in, uh, uh, that we will uh, need. Uh, the classical Thuy paper in 1907, he wrote it. Okay, I uh, published it the year after, uh, uh, where he uh, gave the... F sorry. Yeah. Please interrupt sorry. me at any... Yes. Yeah, I, I've got a question. I, I missed something you said. You said uh, we've got... Um, we're looking at uh, binomial functions. What, what does that mean? Uh, it means uh, this one minus x to the power nu, and we're looking at Pade approximation, the Pade table, which uh, puts up the unique polynomials of uh, degrees up to n, for which this uh, order of vanishing is as high as possible. And in this case, okay, so uh, this was the first of two papers uh, proving the ineffective irrationality measure, first for the special binomial numbers arthroids from a rational number, just uh, before he found this uh, insight with uh, the box principle and uh, basically finding out that this this, this this scheme works out in full generality. Uh, and I'm just recalling, so basically uh, the ANs and the BNs are explicit polynomials that I had just a, uh, a moment ago. So here imagine this is the argument uh, the, the... Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my question is: You said that um, a general scheme is we take the Pade approximations of a binomial function, and then we form a generating function right. of these, and then, and then, what did you say? We evaluate at a point x, and then something. it's very subtle. It's very. I mean, this example is. Uh, it's not common to be able to say an effective. Uh, conclusion like that. So what Tui did in the completely general case uh, was uh, if you have a exceptional uh, approximant P over Q to alpha with this approxim uh, with uh, this uh, quality, like uh, the Fantin exponent, R over 2 plus epsilon, uh, then you can use that as a lever uh, to, to find the dense uh, net to construct many other approximates that are not as good, but quite still quite decent basically by taking this identity using that, uh, okay, so this vanishing at a high order at, so basically we, we, were, we were going to set uh, X equal to the following. Uh, and so you just uh, an explicit recipe to construct uh, other good approximations PN over QN. Uh, and that would forbid a second excellent approximation uh, because of the gap principle. So the key point uh, in Tui, which in this case he could see from the explicit formulas, uh, for, he, he wrote them as a recursion for these polynomials a n and b n. Zero explained that they, they are really just uh, the, uh, the uh, hypergeometric uh, uh, function polynomials. Uh, and so uh, the key point was this uh, uh, determinants, okay, non-vanishing two by two determinants, uh, for which show that we always get uh, uh, dense. Uh, so basically, uh, we can fit p, p prime over q prime between two successive approximants p n over q n, and these two are different and not too far off in height. 
Uh, and by the gap principle, this shows that the P prime over Q prime cannot be a uh, exceptionally good approximant given. Uh, so, so this is uh, this uh, 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 ineffective uh, method that evolved into Roth and Schmidt and Faltings. And uh, we, uh, uh, so we uh, uh, cannot uh, completely overcome uh, even in, We'll, we'll see some some similar issues later. Uh, but the key point. Uh, is, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a bit lost. So it's a method to do what? It's a method to prove Delphantin inequalities using other approximations and specializing them at uh, algebraic point X or a rational point in this case. Okay. But uh, the method, the, the point of relevance here is to note, uh, okay, so for the binomial functions, I'll display some similar formulas. You have uh, explicitly, these formulas are, uh, I have them on the previous slides, basically. Uh, and so the order of vanishing here uh, by the general Pade theory, is just like solving, okay, just like solving a linear set of equations, you can always attain this order to n plus one by a parameter count. But uh, so for this case, uh, it is actually the exact order of vanishing, uh, because this coefficient is explicitly computed, it is not zero. And this is the reason why uh, basically this determinant uh, uh, is not identically zero. It has to vanish to this order, but it's a polynomial of degree uh, at most 2n plus, two n plus 1. And one sees that this is the correct coefficient. So basically, okay, so this is a, a bad approximability uh, property for binomial functions just on the functional level by polynomials or by rational functions in function field arithmetic. Uh, and so before giving, so I'm, I'm hinting at, uh, so this one uh, ingredient that we will use uh, in our approach, Shidlovsky's uh, lemma, uh, and I'm just displaying some examples before that. So for the exponential function, actually, actually the previous example would be reduced formally uh, to this very classical Hermit formula. It's a completely similar story. And so from the explicit formulas, you can see, because we just construct, a, uh, I mean, um, uh, somehow a dense, uh, as dense as possible net of uh, functional. This uh, generic vanishing order by uh, uh, approximating, uh, well, with polynomials of degrees uh, in the at most 10 and at most M. So for log one minus six, final example, uh, we have, uh, this is the Pade approximate. Okay, another explicit identity due to Jacobi. Uh, it's uh, also for more, for some more general hypergeometric functions. Uh, and uh, these, so these coefficients, so let's say we have some polynomial B of X of degree at most and the function we are approximating and some polynomial A, with integer coefficients. And here the H are the harmonic numbers. So this polynomial will have uh, rational coefficients, but the uh, least common uh, denominator of the first of, uh, of the coefficients is of, the, of, of this form one to N. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I, in the notation I had. And uh, the polynomials in this uh, Pade approximation are essentially, uh, uh, Jacob, uh, essentially Lejeune polynomials up to, uh, Substitution, so we can express. Uh, yeah, you, again, you see that the exact order of vanishing is two n plus one. So let's uh, try to think of uh, in the following terms uh, of the bad approximability. You look at all the jumps of the filtration by order of vanishing in the following sense. So you look at. Uh, I'm looking just at the diagonal of the Pate table, so to speak. So the polynomials p and q are have the same degree bound. And then the, uh, all the pos all the non-negative integers n that can arise as the exact order of vanishing of some such combination with any polynomials p minus q times our function uh, are uh, exactly the generic ones. So the first, so there are 2G such, uh, such jumps uh, and they are at the first 2D uh, non-negative integers. Uh, Shidlovsky's lemma uh, is uh, basically like the Schmidt subspace theorem in, okay, that uh, is a bit, uh, uh, it's more precise than this, but in, in functional field arithmetic, it's a bad approximability property for solutions of linear ODEs. And this was, uh, in some sense, the step Ziegel was, was uh, so he, he, he could not quite complete his general uh, theory of 
the uh, special values of E functions until uh, Shidlowski, uh pretty elementary proof found this zero estimate in 1959. Uh, and we can say it, uh, express it like this. Uh, so for if you take a first order uh, linear system of the, uh, with a matrix of rational functions, there will be a constant depending on the data such that for all the the filtration jumps, uh, so the this uh, possible order of vanishing of some combination, I'm thinking of auxiliary polynomials in the Fanti constructions, some QIFI with polynomials of the at most D is exactly N. This will be almost uh, with a certain a subset of size MD of the, which is close to the generic case, zero, one to MD minus one. So you cannot approximate too well uh, by uh, rational functions. Uh, before, uh, so we, we start properly with uh, the the new inputs. Uh, I'm just I just have to think of one way to introduce that very overconvergent. Since this is so well known, I just give the stage to uh, one. Okay, so this uh, uh, construction of Prevost fitting exactly in the spirit of the previous examples as uh, starting from the approximation. So maybe this is not so uh, often emphasized as some other approaches. There's still a pretty basic function. Uh, so it's this that uh, one has. Uh, uh, one can construct the explicit Pare approximation uh, with polynomials of order of degrees up to 2n. Uh, and uh, it turns out that if you substitute in this notation, please don't read too much up, uh, into this. It's not really, uh, it's my way to just introduce G. Uh, but basically, uh, specialize y equal to 1 over n, you get essentially zeta of 3 up to some uh, rational uh, tail. Uh, and so the function that occurs is of the form b of x minus this, uh, as we can say, holonomic coefficient, okay, minus some transcendental coefficient zeta 3 times a of x. And the a of x will have integer coefficients. And the b of x will have rational coefficients with denominators of this type, LCM of the first n integers cubed. Uh, and these are exactly upper these approximations. So uh, we have written down a function, holonomic, maybe it lives more naturally. This paper of Boykers interprets that uh, in, with the, uh, the modular curve x16, modulo the freaking involution. And uh, in the coordinate x of a natural half model on this curve, the singularities of the ODE are zero infinity and this uh, celebrated uh, Aperi uh, radii. So uh, the constant zeta 3 is the unique uh, complex number for which uh, you get a combination of two solutions of, of this ODE, which overconverges not only at zero, but also in the small singularity. Therefore, the convergence radius of this power series with arithmetic properties uh, is the, uh, the distance to the next singularity. And uh, uh, so the um, so this is all that APD used, but we see that there's a lot more structure into these functions. And the question is how we can exploit. Uh, so there is a, uh, of course, a, a differential equation is as old as the story, but uh, how can we use that uh, be, uh, for in arithmetic? Uh, so uh, let me uh, give one first example, which is very, very close in spirit to what we do is in fact a baby case. Uh, and then I'll uh, show our holonomy bounds. So uh, this was a, a paper of Vadim Zudilin called The Determinant of Approach to Irrationality. I'm uh, interpreting in uh, some somewhat different notation. And I'm actually taking those admit Padre approximations to the logarithm. I mentioned that essentially they come, they're described by Lujandra polynomials. Uh, so this is, uh, now I have switched notation uh, somehow. Uh, uh, so A is this previous X and I have a, uh, somehow a linear cha uh, fractional change of, so before what I had log of one minus a is now this. Uh, this is an equivalent equivalent formula, so, uh, and uh, it, uh, but it, it, it makes the overconvergence very uh, transparent. It's like this twadic product at the beginning, and now it's Archimedean. Now you, you can see that basically uh, this integral uh, will, this product uh, will, Overconverge uh, at the smaller singularity will be still holomorphic at the smaller singularity of uh, of this uh, holonomic function. It's clear that singularities will be the roots of this quadratic, 
which incidentally, of course, the connection to Lujanic polynomials is this is their generating function uh, as polynomials in A. Uh, and so, okay, so if you uh, if you uh, uh, go around the uh, loop loop around the, so this particular singularity, both factors will switch sign, so the product will still be holomorphic. But on the other hand, it has arithmetic properties. Of course, this uh, integral is essentially a logarithm function, and uh, so we are evaluating the logarithm function at the endpoints of the integration, so one can see uh, the coefficients of the product will have the following form. So it's again uh, some, so, uh, some period. Uh, so we might be interested in an irrationality proof of the, for the period or in some irrationality measures, the function inequalities, times some function with integer coefficients and some function with rational coefficients involving denominators from the integration that mix up somehow the LCM of the first 10 integers. And so uh, here the observation is that uh, pretty elementary, uh, if uh, A is an integer, there's this. Uh, and uh, if uh, A is an odd integer, there are no it's even better, so there are no denominators of two. You can just cross them out. And so traditionally you take, uh, so this is Aladi and Robinson and also Berger's uh, um, uh, classical uh, construction. So you prove uh, the irrationality with uh, some decent irrationality measure already for log two, taking A equal to three and noting that the convergence uh, radii, uh, just like the decay rate of the coefficients of this function, win over the, the denominators. In this case, two to the end uh, that is irrelevant, no extra twos. So the, the rate of the denominators grows like e by the prime number theorem, e times the uh, bigger, uh, okay, I guess the singularities are reciprocal here, but you, you see what I, I mean, the convergence radius is like the larger singularities and the product, uh, and that that is bigger than e. Or in other words, so this product is smaller than one, uh, and the approximations are good enough, they just converge fast enough to prove the irrationality. They're just excellent approximations. But for A equal to two, this falls short because now it doesn't prove log three is irrational, right? Uh, so uh, we have a function g of x now with extra denominators at two, uh, and still uh, it uh, and the convergence radius is two uh, plus square root of three. And uh, in this uh, paper I alluded to, uh, uh, Zudilin observes that uh, we can actually use the holomorphicity um, of this uh, function on the slit plane, where it's more than just convergent. Or this is, of course, the largest, the, the actual convergence radius, but it has an analytic continuation on any simply connected domain in the complex plane, avoiding all the singularities. We just take that branch slit and that single value branch. Can we exploit that? So what goes on here uh, is uh, Hankel determinants. So basically you have this slit uh, uh, plane uh, and any holomorphic function on it. Of course, the coefficients will decay in general exactly at this rate, one over rho, but the Hankel determinants uh, will, uh, will be smaller than generically for just like convergent power, power series uh, on the disk. Uh, and this is an expression, pretty much, uh, yeah, expression of the analytic continuation to a larger region, this particular Riemann surface, uh, C minus this slit, uh, and this four row is a transfinite, uh, okay, four, four, four row is the Riemann mapping radius of this Riemann surface from the origin. Uh, and of course this, uh, uh, so uh, yeah, this is a general feature uh, uh, leading to Fekete's transfinite diameter and Poyas arithmetic rationality theorem. So already a special case of this observation uh, is that a rational, fun rational sorry, coefficients, uh, power series with rational integer coefficients, which is holomorphic on a slit plane with rho bigger than a quarter is already a rational function. So here are examples. Uh, uh, so the need not be a polynomial, uh, but also uh, one quarter is best possible uh, because you have this algebraic function that Okay, it's obviously not rational. Uh, so, so here's uh, Zudilin's refinement. If you have denominators, uh, and this will be a very simple example of our holonomy bounds in a moment. Uh, so, uh, if you do have this denominator type, so the nth coefficient has at most denominator LCM of one n to the power of sigma, so e to the sigma is the growth rate, and then the usual criterion would be uh, asking if we constructed. Uh, like a uh, good uh, enough rational approximation would be simply to ask if rho times e to the sigma 
uh, were, uh, oh, sorry, if, if, if rho is bigger than e to the sigma, if that's the case, we've demonstrated irrationality. But also, uh, so this is the condition that we can exploit the four radius uh, from the larger analytic continuation. Uh, and so this condition also implies rationality of Q just by the same argument with Hanko determinants, uh, uh, keeping track of the denominators. So let me display this uh, into, firstly, show why uh, this proves uh, irrationality of log three uh, in this scheme. Uh, so, uh, okay, the trivial, the round disk does not suffice in this example. We have more structure given by analytic continuation, this slit and Zudlin's criteria now applies. The radius is big enough to give, uh, um, uh, to pass this criterion. Unfortunately, the criterion did not have any new uh, irrationality proofs in the paper. Uh, and uh, uh, so in some sense, we find a way to, uh, so we, uh, to treat uh, uh, somehow, uh, uh, so more flexible, uh, so rationality criteria are just asking if one and F are linearly independent over Q of X. And this is the same as saying uh, is the, uh, uh, so this is about uh, the Qx uh, dim dimension of the Qx linear span of uh, certain sets of functions. Uh, so uh, this is our uh, refinement, though it, it, it's a special, it's an, uh, in the early stage of our collaboration, but it did not yet have uh, uh, the, the desired applications. Uh, I'm showing you a statement that includes Zudling's criterion uh, in, in exactly the same set, setting. And you can imagine indeed that you can have uh, much more generality, maybe C minus a compact, the four, four row will be replaced by the uh, by a transfinite diameter of, uh, uh, okay, so it has to be careful, but uh, you can have any simply connected open part of the Riemann sphere, and you can replace four row by the inner mapping radius from the origin of, uh, of that domain. Uh, okay, so basically you see that if, uh, so uh, the dimension of the QX linear span of, of all functions holomorphic here and with these denominators is finite and does not exceed the following. So you just solve two, two equals this if and only if uh, just reduces to Zudlin's condition. Uh, and so for example, there's this example of log one minus six, which belongs to the space with sigma equal to one and rho equal to one. Uh, that does not contradict this, but it shows uh, because there aren't too many such functions, we, 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 uh, this dimension estimate is smaller than three. So for example, this proves that uh, the space of all functions of this property with sigma equals one and rho equals one is just two dimensional, uh, uh, the, the span over qx by one and log one minus x. So this is a baby example of uh, somehow taming this space of G functions uh, that are in, in many cases, uh, linked to uh, uh, upper East style irrationality programs of trying to, to prove, uh, to emulate upper East when possible. Uh, so this is a much more complicated, uh, so the, the, the fine uh, holonomy bound that we finally, uh, we, uh, uh, I think we gave some uh, talks uh, before with uh, much more uh, uh, much less systematic bounds. Uh, I think this is finally approaching something uh, more useful. So uh, you, uh, we consider um, uh, M tuples of linear of, of, of linearly independent formal functions with rational coefficients, linearly dependent over Q of X, and with the following uh, denominator types. For some uh, array matrix, of uh, maybe say real numbers, uh, non-negative, and uh, which is decrease, which is some M, M cross R array, uh, and uh, it's non-decreasing in every column, so some monotonicity. Uh, and uh, suppose we have uh, also uh, holomorphic mapping phi uh, on the closed uh, unit disk to the complex numbers, sending zero to zero, uh, and with sufficiently big uh, derivative conformal size. This has to be uh, the role, play the role of this raw 
uh, or conformal radius is big enough. So if the conformal size of E is bigger than E to the sigma M, taking sigma I to be the row sums of the, of the matrix, giving, giving the denominator growth for each function, and we define a certain uh, quantity to measure how bad the denominators are in the aggregate. Uh, and it's, uh, as you can see, so the sigma I are increasing. Uh, sigma M is the largest of them. This tau of beta is just a better version, tau of B is a better version of sigma of M. So it's some something intermediate, uh, certainly bounded by sigma of M. And now uh, if, uh, so this derivative is bigger than e to the sigma of M, these functions are all holonomic. This is theorem. Uh, so far it's, uh, uh, due to Andre, in, uh, just saying that there exists a linear differential equation, but much more precisely. Uh, uh, so I said, so there are these, okay, so the denom denominator types, integrality condition against analytic continuation condition. So they form a finite dimensional uh, linear sp space over Q of X. Uh, and now the whole uh, point is an explicit upper bound on this dimension. So I'm saying, uh, so uh, this uh, numerator also the recent work in um, uh, arithmetic intersection theory by Boston Scharl. So uh, that refines uh, many quantities we had uh, earlier that were slightly less precise. Uh, and uh, a new point is this uh, tau, uh, which is averaged over uh, using the fact that we, we may have a, a functions, some of the denominators may be better than others. Uh, so it's a little uh, maybe jarring for without uh, examples, uh, but let me uh, show you the principle of, of, of how on proofs, basically by proving, by sketching the proof of Andre's theorem. And all the arguments in this subject are more or less versions of, of, of very similar to, to the following. And this is borrowed from... Uh, uh, a paper in a different problem by Pirelli and Zania, but it's basically uh, the same argument. Uh, some version uh, of uh, uh, the box principle with, uh, so uh, so it's a very much a transcendental number theory. Uh, in, so we, we want an upper bound on the largest possible number. So you have a fi linearly independent functions uh, and we want an upper bound on m if we have the datum, in terms of the datum phi and sigma in this case, under this condition. Uh, such a bound is what we call the uh, holonomy bound. Uh, so we find, uh, we look for these auxiliary polynomial constructions to uh, taking m tuples of polynomials of a uh, uh, degree smaller than some parameter d and coefficients in this range, like integers less than two to the d. Obviously we have that many inputs. And if the functions are independent, they can have, uh, so we, we form this auxiliary function f of x uh, as usual. Uh, and this uh, this assignment uh, from q to, a, b to f should be injective. So we should, uh, if by linear independence, we have the same number of output functions. But we can just count, uh, just uh, bound uh, the output functions. Uh, and it turns out that this condition, uh, which is the sharp uh, condition giving uh, finite dimensionality and uh, indeed the uh, differential equation is uh, uh, exactly what guarantees the coefficients of f to be eventually pinned down by sufficiently many initial co coefficients, this principle of extrapolation. And uh, so uh, one, uh, so this argument or the simplest way to execute this, so you just take uh, one such auxiliary function, you write it like, so you, some, some polynomial is qi. Now, now you take two such, and suppose they agree to order x to the n, to order n, then their difference uh, will be, uh, so some, uh, uh, so c is some non-zero coefficient, uh, which we know is a rational number with denominator at most uh, LCM of one n to the power sigma in this example, but also uh, you can use finally this analytic map phi of z, so it has this uh, derivative size uh, times z plus higher order terms. So this, I've written down also the leading order coefficient of the pullback v of phi of z. And by Cauchy's formula, we can express analytically this uh, leading order coefficient as a contour integral, or we can use Poisson and Janssen's formula. Alternatively, uh, we can use the uh, just 
estimating by the absolute value <laughs> on the contour. Uh, and so you get an upper bound on the leading order coefficient, which is uh, exponential in the degree parameter. Uh, so you have uh, this uh, coefficient was an in, in this module, it's not zero and it's a, uh, uh, so this rational integer is at least one and we get a lower, so basically we get uh, at most that many output possibilities uh, if uh, given uh, the first n coefficients. So that comes up, comes down to a product. So just basically we cut off the output possibilities by an infinite, formally infinite product. It really has apparently many relevant terms. And we can easily estimate that exponentially in d squared. We can compute some explicit coefficient of d squared. Now just take the m to exceed that explicit coefficient. Very computable, but very crude. So, I mean, uh, so this gives a, qualitative proof of Andre's theorem. And all the work is uh, in uh, proving refined uh, dimension estimate, dimension bounds. Uh, so uh, don't have too, too, many, too much time left, but I want to, uh, so, um, uh, so, so let's just uh, discuss this Aperi over convergent example. This is all that Aperi used, uh, just the round disks. And for non-quadraticity, uh, for example, if you uh, have uh, um, quadratic number fields trying to prove zeta of three is not in, in that quadratic field, this is like having half the Archimedean radius. So the comparison is fails very miserably because this row is now much smaller than e to the six. But observe that uh, you can use a phi of z in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the criteria. Uh, and we have automatic analyticity, for instance, for any, uh, for example, for the following map phi. So there exists a map phi uh, which uh, has, uh, which meets the criterion of Andre's theorem. The derivative of uh, at the origin is basically the derivative of the lambda function. The modular lambda function has derivative 16 uh, at q equals zero. Q is e to the pi i tau. Uh, and this is the largest, uh, this is, apparent from this expression is the largest possible derivative at the origin for any holomorphic function on the disk, uh, unit disk, which avoids the value one and has a single, uh, and it has uh, just a zero, single point pre-image zero uh, over zero. Uh, and uh, so for, uh, just by looking at the singularities of the differential equation, uh, this power series uh, is an, uh, a holomorphic and that so uh, convergent on on the whole unit disk. And so what we've done, uh, we we pose this impossible Delphantine problem, pretty uh, similar to uh, Delphantine classical Delphantine problems, like uh, this uh, solutions of uh, well, uh, Delphantine inequality, like q root of two minus p over q less than q to the minus two point one, things like that, where we have finiteness theorems. And uh, so here, if we could uh, uh, could uh, determine the finite dimensional space that I described in Andre's uh, the statement of Andre's finiteness theorem, which is given phi uh, with a, and given a denominator type, and given this condition, which we we, we met uh, we we saw is satisfied in uh, like non quadraticity of zeta three uh, problem. So uh, describe the finitely many QX linear independent functions that is like give a give a basis of the functions with these properties, uh, uh, the denominators, integrality property against analytic continuation property. Uh, if we could solve that problem, we would immediately by the previous have proved the non-quadraticity of the zeta three uh, under a host of other problems, including this one by a construction of Zudilin, one zeta two and zeta three are linearly independent uh, and many others. Uh, but unfortunately, we just have upper bounds and just uh, uh, it uh, in the cases, at least in this case, with uh, illustrate uh, by uh, uh, the Apelli function, this seems hopeless. Uh, and so uh, I just uh, want to say what the setup uh, of the application is. And uh, so the um, uh, it turns out that there is one case where we can make a difference by the holonomy bound. And this uh, didn't uh, look like a particularly promising uh, uh, case for irrationality proofs. It is uh, because uh, the constructions Zagia uh, found uh, looking for generalizing the form of a previous recursion for zeta of two to other functions of the type one n squared. Uh, and he found some sporadic examples, which uh, conjecturally a complete list and some families in this paper from 2009. Uh, so uh, it, uh, 
they did not look like uh, uh, good rational approximations at all. So basically, uh, uh, there is a way to realize simultaneously these two periods, zeta 2, L2, chi minus 3, as uh, coefficients uh, in the period, period matrix for a certain very explicit local system on this modular curve, uh, y0 of 6, which in the uh, natural coordinate here is uh, really the uh, so this leads to differential equation with singularities at zero, one over nine, one and infinity. And here one over nine is the overconvergent value. So that means uh, the recipe is uh, displayed by just taking certain modular forms written down, expressing them formally into a X series. They are given as Q series in the modular function. Of course, you have Q equals X plus so forth integer coefficients formally. Uh, and that gives differential equations. So that gives you a holono uh, holonomic functions with these singularities. And one is the convergence radius. So uh, they do not uh, even, uh, they do not converge uh, by, by no stretch uh, are they a decent uh, rational approximation. But nevertheless, uh, so if you have a linear relation among the periods, uh, then you can uh, form a, a certain combination of the uh, of the functions i uh, in Zagi, uh, which have would lead to a improbable G function of the type on the opening slide with the denominators of the type one n squared uh, holonomic on uh, c minus zero, one over nine, one and infinity and over convergent and zero and one over nine. Uh, and uh, so we, uh, uh, the goal is to prove that such a G function does not exist uh, by uh, uh, contradicting the uh, dimension estimates. Uh, and uh, uh, so I, uh, just a couple of words and uh, uh, so just two more minutes to, to wrap up uh, the, uh, the story. Uh, so it's easy to, to fit this into a finite dimensional space of functions, but the bounds that just by using again the modular lambda function uh, and observing that, uh, so you have automatic analyticity, already we have the denominator types uh, on the nodes and H of phi of Z beyond convergent on the unit disk it's actually highly analytic in the sense that H of phi of Z is holomorphic uh, uh, for any holomorphic mapping, avoiding the, as soon as it avoids the value one, has pre-image zero over zero and a singleton pre-image, only one pre-image over this uh, second uh, over convergence singularity one over nine. We can take lambda of Z over two that has derivative bigger than E squared with horrible dimension bound. And so uh, the idea is that we have, uh, we have uh, if we had this, uh, fictional h of x like a lever, we get uh, four, three more, just uh, the, the following derivatives and substitution x over x minus one are independent. And we can, we actually have a list of five true functions together. They would give nine functions uh, uh, for uh, in this uh, holomistic theorem. And the question is, can we prove a dimension bound smaller than nine? Uh, and so this is what we have been working uh, one of the things in our project, uh, and uh, I just want to use uh, to uh, yeah use this opportunity to introduce uh, uh, you to the to these methods and uh, promise a paper soon with uh, with, uh, with these results. So the answer is that we finally uh, get a dimension bound. Uh, which is, uh, so I end, end with this slide, which, which shows the refined uh, bound. Uh, if we, uh, and, uh, and it's finally precise enough to, uh, to crack, uh, to, to, to beat, uh, basically to, to disprove the existence of, of such a G function H. So it consists of, uh, uh, certain, okay, another piece of notation, slightly com more complex. Uh, and uh, so assuming a linear dependence of the uh, one zeta to neo two chi, uh, we construct uh, these nine functions are displayed plus five additional integral functions. And uh, uh, ultimately uh, we choose a suitable date uh, 
uh, uh, to get a dimension bound by less than 14. So in this indirect way, we can approach rationality proofs without any new constructions of uh, upper style sequence. So thank you very much for your attention.